Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Elstonation here. So, yeah, I finally got around to doing this one. Now, if this sounds a little bit off, basically my computer's had a tantrum and my microphone's not working properly. So, but I did want to get this out. I've had so many people ask how I do my Thousand Suns. So, here it is. So, first off, you can see here, I primed the model in black, just to start off with. So, I'm going to start off with Vallejo Premium Metallic Black. And we're just basically going to base coat this with the airbrush. Okay, now after this, we're going to come in with Vallejo Chainmail Silver, and we're going to basically apply this at kind of like a 45 degree angle. So we're not spraying up underneath, we're just spraying down. So this gives us uh, sort of the first parts of the highlight, basically, with, the, with how this whole process works. Then after that, we're going to come in with just silver, and we're going to increase the sort of the incline of the angle, if you will. Um, basically spraying more down rather than horizontal um, and focusing more in specific areas where light would catch basically rather than just all over the place then we're going to come in with scale 75's white alchemy and this is going to be very sparingly applied pretty much top down only spray just focusing on specific areas and this will give us our base coat. Then after this, this is where it happens. So this is the Forge World uh, uh, Air Range. Sorry, anger on red. Um, Tamiya's uh, Clear Red does the same job as well. Uh, only reason why I went with the Forge World stuff is just because it's not as sticky. Um, Tamiya can be a little bit sticky and a little bit problematic, but. Um, both work completely fine. Um, the key with this is, you know how people always say do like small thin layers? Um, you have to do it with this. Uh, it, it basically won't work. If you try and apply it too thickly, and as you can see what I'm doing here is I've done a layer and I'm hitting it with the air dryer just to um, seal the layer down. If you do it too thickly, it will just pull. Uh, it takes a little while to dry this, which is why I'm speeding up with the hair dryer here. Um, and then going in with another one. You can see the, the vibrancy sort of kick up every single layer we do. Um, if you want to, if you want to go more dark reds, um, just basically apply more layers. And if if you want sort of less reds, um, basically don't apply as much. If you want, also I found a trick as well. If you really want to go a slightly darker red as well, mix in a tiny little bit of GW Zagrax Earthshade into the um, uh, into the clear red or angron red when you're putting it through the airbrush and you'll get this sort of maroony color off of it um now one thing i did find i did try and record this once before with another model and what i found the problem was was this paint is it's weird it reacts with other paints um so what you have to do is seal it so after you've put all that air, uh, clear red or uh, forge world uh, angle red, um, put it down. Now what I found out here is I varnished it and I didn't like the colour afterwards. So I went in and did some more and then varnished it again, basically. It's up to you. If you feel brave enough not to varnish it, then go for it. But I find varnishing it does help seal it in and it doesn't attack. Because what, what I found is the, the air red attacks other paint. So it dissolves it a little bit. So now we're going to do uh, the, uh, the sorry the golds here. Um, uh, this is Vallejo's Brassy Bronze, I believe. I missed it just a second ago, but um, yeah, this is basically just a base color for all the um, all the golds.
Okay, now after that, I'm going to give all the gold to wash with GW's Agrax Earthshade. Okay, now this bit we're going to use somber grey basically on all the cabling um, and the joints between the armor plates. Uh, other people might do this in reverse and do a, a black color down and then a bit of a dry brush over with grey. I tend to do a grey and then a wash with black. Um, it, it just suits me better, but you can do the reverse of this. You can do a black um, down and then uh, gray on top up to you you'll, you'll see the result in, the, in a minute on how it comes out um it should be mentioned as well a lot of these stages are just what i do you could probably get away with stopping at a few earlier points in this so you have to remember this is just how i do it so if you've got a different way of doing it you're more than entitled to do it that way and i would encourage it um makes it unique and it makes it your own but this may give you some tips and advice of what you could do um we're then going to use wolf great there's a little bit of irony in this just for the name of the color um and this is just going to go on the tab art as the base color Okay, now we're going to use uh, Vallejo's model color brass and we're going to start highlighting up the gold. So what I'm trying to do is leave the shadows created by the Agrax Earth Shade in place um, and just go over parts of where we did with the base color originally. So you're starting to get a real definition between the gold colors. I mean, you, you could use this as the final layer if you wish to. Um, I do add a couple more layers in just because that's the way I do it. Okay, now we're going to come in with Vallejo's Gamer Gun Metal. Um, and this is basically just going to go on the little centerpiece and some of the vents and bits at the back on the backpack as well. Also the little chain on the tabard. Also, for some odd reason, I decided I wanted all these studs to be metal. Um, I'd probably advise if you're going to do an army of these, don't do it. Just leave them a color or just do them a slightly darker color. Um, then we're going to come in with the black wash, which is non-oil from GW. So this is going to go on top of the metal and on top of the cabling as well. So this is why I did it in two sort of separate parts, so I could only do I only had to do one layer of wash.
Okay, now we're going to come in with a white. There's no point in showing you what brand it is because white is white at the end of the day. Um, and we're just going to highlight up the tab art a bit. Just get some definition in there. What I found was as well, there was quite a sharp uh, contrast between the wolf grey and the white. So what I did was mix the wolf grey with white and go back over in between the gaps as well, just to blend it back in, just to make it nice and smooth. Uh, it's a more fabric sort of tone rather than, um, uh, say, it's like cell shading technique. Okay, now we're going to use Vallejo's uh, Model Air, not, yeah, it is Model Air, sorry, uh, Chrome. Um, and this is just going to highlight up the little silver bits, so like the chain, the little chest piece, um, and some of the vents on the back. Oh, well, also these studs, which I really regret doing. So, yeah. Okay, now we're also going to use chrome on the gold. Now this is kind of like the last highlight. Now what I found with this is if you don't thin it down enough, it does come out rather a bit garishly, um, a bit too much of a highlight. However, what you can do is if you go over it with the chrome and you do think that's the case, um, take some thin down brass, um, what we were using before for the final highlight of gold, um, and go over the silver and blend it in and you'll get an even lighter brass color um, and it makes it quite a nice blend okay and i decided i'll go back over the cabling with another uh, layer of uh, non oil just to bring it down a bit so it might be more worthwhile going with the black and then a gray dry brush over the top but i'll leave that up to yourselves now we're going to do the eyes, we're just going to start off doing a sick green. Basically, if, if anyone's seen how to do eye lenses online, that's how you do it. You start off with a dark colour, um, do a colour sort of halfway across, then uh, another colour right in the middle, and then a white dot right in the centre. Um, uh, basically, because the eyes were so dark, I've just gone in with sick green. Then I go in with, um, I believe, scorpion green. Yep, that's scorpino green from uh, the game air range. That goes right in the corner, so uh, the corner closest to the nose. Um, and then on the opposite side, so the corner closest to the ear, you just do a single white dot, which you should see any second now. Wood, but not enough paint. And there we go. Cool. So... We're getting there. We're getting very close to finishing now. Okay, so now this is the interesting bit. I'm using uh, decals from a company called Fallout Hobbies. Um, if you, uh, there'll be a link below, so go check them out. They basically custom made these decals for me. I gave them the design um, and they made them for me. They're brilliant. Uh, the only downside you'll find is you have to cut a lot closer to the decal itself, unlike GW ones where they'll just slide off at that particular point. Um, you, you have to cut pretty close. Uh, so what you saw very quickly there was me putting down some micro set um, and then lifting the decal off after it's been soaked in water for a while um, and then positioning it onto the model. So what you want to do is once you've got it in place, let it set with the micro set on it. I'm just using a cotton bud there to uh, iron it out a bit um, and leave it to set for a good while. I mean, they say 24 hours, you might be able to get away. Okay, this is where the magic happens a micro sole. Um, put this down, basically, just slather it over the, uh, where the decal is. Um, and again, you definitely want to leave this for about 24 hours. Uh, what this does is shrinks down the transfer and um, basically sticks it to the model. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going over it with a uh, matte varnish. This is just going to tie it all in place. 
and this is the final model. Now I haven't shown you how to do the gun because everyone does their guns differently so there's no point in showing you that. Also I haven't shown you how to do the base because everyone does their bases differently. So I will leave that down to yourselves. Um, it's a lot quicker than a Night Lord's tutorial, however it might take you a little bit longer actually doing it just for the amount of thin layers of red you've got to do, so keep a hair dryer handy. I hope you guys liked it, if you do want to see any more tutorials let me know, um, I do have some in the works that I've got to get done, but I wanted to get this one done since so many people were asking, so I really do hope you guys like it, um, enjoy the rest of this little bit of a showcase at the end. Uh, check out the Facebook page for any more updates and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos. Thanks very much for watching guys, take it steady and I'll see you next time.